All right, ladies and gents, I have been pumped to cast some Loey the Legends because we have a pretty wild map pool right now. Uh, and wow, we actually have some conversation at the start. Uh, Nile Delta was voted in the map pool by a bunch of people. And it's not the first time we've seen it in the map pool. However, I think it is the first time I've actually casted a game on Nile Delta. I've been aware of it. I will have more games on Nile Delta, including an epic pro game I saw, saw on Nile Delta earlier today. But uh, anyways, it's a nomad start. You do not start with the town center. And players start on the islands. It's very similar to the community game map Pilgrims, you could say. Um, Red is very talkative already. So I looked at Red's profile. Red has 9 wins and 31 losses. And then Blue has like 80 wins and 200 losses. They both come out around 350 ELO. Now, I was thinking about how to play this map. I did actually look at the map yesterday in more detail, and I do think it's probably the right play to town center one of the side islands. But then you could delay your villager production. Like, now blue is able to create villagers already. And so you have options, right? Like, this isn't necessarily horrible. It could make your life awkward later on. Um, blue is going to transport a villager over here. I think if there was a meta for this, you would want to build a dock say like here or something and then you want to add fishing ships and then red walled tower is going to town center right between two wood lines and on the berries this is a good town center overall would always prefer on a nomad start that you town center a wood line so like being closer to wood would make it better but we shall see whoa walled tower is vietnamese i actually didn't think about that until now so vietnamese will tell you where the opponent's town center is I think Walled Tower is now going to send the transport over here to get the goats. All right. I played Walled Tower just two hours ago. Really? Uh, how did that game go? <laughs> now, notice it's lower elo, so players aren't going to put as much of a priority on fishing. So, Inquisidor is going to take the ostrich here instead. That is the downside of starting here. You get the villagers out faster, but then you have the transport a lot more. There's quite a bit of hunts uh, available on this map. There's like tons of rhino, or not rhinos, I guess elephants, ostrich, and obviously plenty of fish. I feel like they could even spawn more fish if they really wanted to get crazy on this map. But maybe the devs didn't want fish booming to just win the game. Oh, God. Oh, my God. Red. Oh, no. That villager's trapped. That villager's not going to be able to drop off wood for a long time. Oh, no. <laughs> okay, will Red delete the house? Like, you can tell Red's like, oh, oh, no, I can't. Might take Red a bit yet. Didn't realize the houses were going to block the villager in. Uh, it's worth deleting the house here, right? Because that's one villager you don't have working. Houses are only 25 wood, so you would bring that in with that villager if that villager was free. Still just hanging out. Uh, still maybe thinking about the goats over here. Uh, Blue has transported another villager. And wow, 50-some seconds of TC idle time from both players. Not bad, but yeah, this villager cannot work. He also won't show on the idle eco counter because as far as the game is concerned, he is trying to work. The trees also have 150 wood, so... There's 80 wood remaining there, and then there's 141 re wood remaining there. And, yeah, maybe Red doesn't realize it is possible. Uh, if you were to use an idle villager hotkey at this point, it probably would not take you to that villager, so. Unfortunate start there for Walled Tower. A much faster start for Inquisidor. But things will be more awkward in the long run, like we've established, right? So anyways, I am. if you're a Loey the Legend fan uh, who watches on streams or on YouTube, I think you should be excited for the next few weeks because at least the next two, we're going to have some awesome games. Socotra is one of my favorite casting maps for Loey Lo. Uh, Nile Delta, I think, may get old after a bit, but you know this is an example of variety we haven't really seen much of before. There's also Fortress, which I think could be pretty interesting. It's just a really good varied map at the moment. Uh, some people with higher elo might not like it as much, but you know most higher elo players don't like variety as much. So, and look, Red's still trying to move this villager around. I think Red just realized and is gonna—they're gonna try and free. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This guy's like, don't tell me to chop more wood. I already have enough of it in my hands. 
his biceps are probably burning, but let's be honest, he can handle it. He's jacked. Absolutely jacked. Yep, just still walking around. Red refuses to delete a house. Could have deleted a house a long time ago, but at this point, you're committed to not deleting houses, I guess. I don't think Red fully understands why the villager isn't chopping. I think... <laughs> I think that's the funniest thing. Also, Red, could you please change your name to Walled Villager? Because that would be a whole lot more accurate here. <laughs> I don't know if that's mean to bring up. That might be uh, some some low-bearing fruit, but... Um, okay. I, I thought it was funny. If we don't get anyone laughing out there at that, whatever. I, I, I Sometimes you just got to make yourself laugh, you know? <laughs> now, Red has probably heard my tips on docking, which is great. And Red's like, well, you know what's better than one dock? Two docks. The sad thing for Red is now you have no wood to make fishing ships. I guess there's one fishing ship on the way. So I like the idea from Red. By the way, Jimmy Bob Jr., that's his name. I'm sure you didn't see his name tag. You can't see it because it's it's on the his chest. And he's facing the other direction. Anyways, uh, he's about to be free after not working for quite a long time. Though it's unfair to us to call that not working. He's at least trying. Blue is winning this game, but I don't know what the long-term plans are going to be for Blue. Why is Blue going over here with the villager right now? Okay. Oh, Blue is thinking about docking over there. I'm... Kind of disappointed that there's no dock there because it would have been the worst possible dock and that would have been funny to me. But this is a much better dock position. If you really wanted to be fancy, you could transport your villager to one of these islands and that'd be the best dock. Also, I'm really unsure how the ostrich got there because as far as I'm concerned, the ostrich cannot fly. So I don't know if an ostrich can swim, to be honest. Okay, Red's going to make more houses now, uh, getting pop capped at 15 population. Red does have two fishing ships, though, which isn't bad. I know elephants can swim, because that, that's like... I don't remember a lot of childhood facts, but I remember being astounded as a kid that something that big could swim, you know? So I've I, I, th there's definitely something in my memory bank about elephants swimming. Elephants, they... What do they swim? They have a great memory, a big brain... I think those are the only elephant facts that I really know. And I don't think I need any more in my life, to be honest. But I don't know. I know ostriches can't fly. Maybe they can swim. Who knows? Yeah, the water must have been dry. Right? Yeah, that's true. Global warming, I guess. But these poor guys didn't, <laughs> didn't realize the water was rising. And they're like, no, we're going to stay here. <laughs> I do like how Red is now thinking ahead. A lot of players who get pop capped. Oh my god, Red is going to make a nice little arena here. But a lot of players who get population capped will just make one house, and then they just leave it at that. And then five population later, they get housed again, and five population later, they get housed again, and that cycle continues, and it can be really frustrating. But that's not going to happen here. Not to Red. Red's going to make quite a few houses. Red really needs to click up to the feudal age, though. And a Red was able to bring the goats back. They are actually... The one goat is behind the transport ship. You can kind of see the goat hoof. Um, and yeah, anyways, Red, we'll see if you click up here to Feudal Age. You do have the buildings, and you do have the resources, and there you go. T90 sounding disappointed at 350 ELO <laughs> getting pop capped to 15 pop, and then there's still me at 750 ELO doing it. I wasn't disappointed. I was not disappointed. I would be disappointed if Red wouldn't learn, but Red has learned. So as far as Red is concerned, Blue is here. Now, my question to everyone watching this, and I have no answers here, but like, is Blue going to delete this TC at some point? I don't know. It feels awkward. You do have villagers on gold. You do have a barracks now. The Blue is maybe expecting that the enemy could be over here. You do not have a scout to check those types of things. Uh, villagers around this mill are just farming. Villagers around the TC are chopping wood. Could probably farm as well. And Blue did add a few fishing ships to help out the eco. Blue has been consistently ahead in this game. But if you look at the idle TC time and the fishing ship count, it largely has to do with where Blue decided to build the TC. So the, the positive of building the TC right away is you get more vills. The negative is it's awkward. 
King Sanchez says, Blue should win water battle, hands down. He is Vikings. Well, that's awfully bold of you to assume there will be a water battle, my friend. Because at low elo, players really don't understand water to the same level. I agree with you that controlling the seas would be fantastic. It keeps you protected so they cannot land you. It gives them a possibility for you yourself to use that transport ship and land army. But very rarely do you see uh, water control. We have supplies instead, naturally. Because who wouldn't want to have supplies out and about? We talk about supplies a lot. I'm not even sure at this point if people know what it does. Or maybe they do. They did change the cost of supplies twice over the years. So it used to be much more expensive. And then they lowered it for balance reasons. And now it's like, yeah, okay, someone gets supplies, whatever. But I always talk about the apples, man. Mom always told me an apple a day kept the doctor away. And there's like a dozen apples in that box. So these players are all over it. Lots of upgrades here for blue as well. Blue with supplies and man at arms. Vikings do have great infantry, so making the militia line cheaper is not a bad thing. And now villagers gone into the transport ship, which has me very curious. Because all these upgrades are coming in for infantry, but we're not seeing infantry yet. Red also is adding a galley. A single galley, not two galleys, just one. Just to scout out, maybe. 18 eco versus 29. Okay, wow. So blue has really been on top of it. Not to mention that Vikings get wheelbarrow for free. So Inquisidor is definitely my favorite right now. Um, okay, so transport ship came over with Oneville and dropped her off over here? What? Okay. I mean, blue might be ahead in economy, but blue's decisions are really fascinating. Let's put it that way. All right, we have a, a lumber camp that works for all the trees right in the middle. It's not too bad. You are, again, having wheelbarrow, you're not too far away from those trees. That's fine. And then more villagers. Yeah, blue realizes that this wood area is an issue. And I like blue's recognition there. But red recognizes that water control can be really important. Also, red researches the wood upgrade, the farm upgrade... And wheelbarrow quite early. Now, sadly, you do have to wait all that time and spend the resources for wheelbarrow, but... Red actually seems to have a pretty solid plan here. Uh, Blue's plan revolves around infantry, but how are you going to use infantry if you can't get any villagers over there? And this is Blue's perspective. Now, let's see what Blue does to react to this. Vikings cannot make fire ships, so they would have to make their own galleys, and this pressure could overwhelm Blue. Now, this is where I'm, I have my fingers crossed. I really hope Blue doesn't resign. So many low elo players, when they see stuff like this, it's almost like getting tower rushed. They just freak out, and they just like, eh, you know what, I'm out of here. And Blue needs to recognize you can go up to Castledge, you can fight back on water. Facing a little bit of adversity isn't a bad thing all the time, okay? But, you know, there's a there's a lot of players out there who the second they face trouble, just say, yeah, that's not for me. You know, like, I'm not here to stress myself out, and they will leave. And so I'm hoping that's not the case for Blue. I'm also hoping that Blue knows you can garrison inside docks. That's kind of a... That's something that a lot of players don't know. Yeah, you see that? So you could actually right-click inside your dock and keep the ships in there. Now, Red, here's the attack bell. Takes a little while, but Red now reacts, and Red will shoot that galley down. Okay, so not too bad. We also have red on stone for some reason. Red will never go Castlage, though. Red does not have, wow, gold over there, too. Red really does not have a lot of food income compared to blue. Um, so I like blue is now going to add another dock. And blue is actually making a galley and then a demolition ship. A demolition raft. Also, Coffee90, thank you for asking. My neck's pretty good. Uh, weekend off did, did a lot for me. I... I had kind of burnt myself out in July. Well, I didn't burn myself out, but I just did a lot of content and streams. We have three channels pumping content, and so it just got... It caught up with me near the tail end, and I was like, I think a weekend off would be really good for me. But yeah, I'm feeling good. There's a demo, and the demo lands. That was a really good demo, and actually, Blue will clear up these two galleys, I believe... 
Oh yeah, that demo will clear up both of those. The red is now going to switch into fire galleys. Still, in the end, the awkward thing for Vikings, if they don't have the lead on water, is the fact that they don't have their own fires. There's the demo. That's good. I mean, you could continue to just send demos into the fires, too. But that's not going to control water. You're going to need more galleys for that. Blue has had the resources to go Castle Age for a long time. However, Blue has not had the buildings. The barracks does not count as a Fuel Age building. That is a Dark Age building. The Blacksmith is one of two buildings that you need. You could go Market next, or Stable, or an Archer range. Wow, look at Red. Spread out the ship. So Red knows that you don't want to leave your ships clumped up against demos. That's really smart thinking. And honestly, the longer this goes, the more I have belief in Red. Now, I've got a game to show you guys eventually from a high level on Nile Delta, which is pretty exciting. But, like, this is kind of how I expected the map to play out when I looked at it yesterday. Fast Castle, or, like, Fast Feudal, lots of water control. It's sad for Blue, because Blue needs more villagers on wood. Blue still is also, like, needs wood to make the demos and the galleys. This feels like a never-ending cycle. And <laughs> look at Red! Oh, God, I hope Red doesn't use the demos against the dock. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Red is going to mess four demos right now. I like how now that the game has gotten a little messy, both players have just forgotten to produce out of their TC altogether. Something that Red doesn't know is that taking out the houses from Blue will actually be hugely effective there. Okay, demo into the dock. You need, like, eight demos to take out the dock, so... Probably not worth it, but it's about sending a message. Oh, this is funny. So auto farm is on. And if this farm gets taken out, I'm pretty sure the villager is going to automatically spend wood to farm another farm afterwards. I could be wrong, though. Boom. Another demo. Why not? That dock's going to go down. Blue, though, is not really massing anything, actually. Maybe blue is saving wood for a market. Aha! Blue is going to make an archer range on this island. And I swear to God, if anyone makes an archer ranges on island joke, you're banned, okay? Not funny anymore. Seriously, though, Blue's having some big problems. But Blue will be in Castle Age faster, most likely. The lack of wood has been a big concern. Not getting that wood upgrade earlier on. Obviously hurting here. Here comes Blue. And we have four archer ranges. Uh, pff, oh, God. Uh, houses, sorry. I had archer ranges on the mind. Blue certainly has resources to fight back as long as some houses are made and as long as Blue clicks up to Castle Age here. Blue, the, the pressure is just so on, man. Oh, man. You just... Again, like, Blue could easily resign here. A lot of players would have resigned already. Say what you want about Wild, uh, Wald Tower, but Wald Tower at least understands how to play the map. This is how you should probably play the map. Okay, there goes Blue. The Blue is on the way to Castle H. Credit to Blue because Blue actually had to cancel builds to make that happen. The houses will slowly come up. Blue still can't produce, though. And Blue is going to produce three demos from this dock. Zero from this dock. Obviously a concern. You also have this farm getting taken out. Looks like the lonely farmer was burned down as well. Sad times. But what do you want to do if you're in Red's position? You want to go up to Castle Age. That's the way you solidify your control in this game, is just go up to Castle Age. Red's still queuing up more vills. Not a bad habit. But obviously, with these resources, you know, some higher evil players might use the market, buy some food, do some fancy stuff, you know? Red could also use the transport ship to maybe transport some villagers to tower or something. But these guys are playing with limited APM. There goes another demo. This is funny to me. <laughs> the full demo tactic is really funny to me. Honestly, I don't think Red's micro is really good enough where the demos are going to not work. Especially, like, if Blue is able... Here he goes. If Blue is able to get the War Galley upgrade and realizes that that upgrades the demos, this could be devastating for Red. I'm such a big fan of these two players right now. Red with the excellent strategy, but Blue hanging on. Low Eagle players normally... Not all of them put up a fight this way. 
All right, there's the transport ship, so that'll be going down. So now, like, there's no chance of escape. But there was never really a chance of escape anyways. Now, I made a video on the docks in Age of Empires 2 and how it's confusing to upgrade a certain type of ship and have it affect another ship. You guys can watch that video already. For that reason, I'm assuming that Blue will not recognize that getting the War Galley upgrade affects the demos. It's a very confusing aspect of our game, but the demo rafts are still working. And Red over here is making 10 fishing ships. <laughs> Whoa, Red, you, you don't even see 10 fish to go to. Wow, Red's like, I've got water control, baby. It's time to boom. It's time to boom, baby. And Blue is booming in a more unique way. And there's another boom there. Boom, done. I can't wait. I, If this game finishes and it that pop down that shows the most created unit says demos for Blue, I'm going to lose my mind. It's been a lot of demos. But look at Blue's resilience. Still has this TC, by the way. I was wondering if maybe that would be deleted. I guess it's as good as deleted right now because it's not being focused on. Longboat, no fletching. Boom, another demo. Longboats are definitely an awesome go-to for the Vikings at this stage. Blue is definitely going to need to get access to gold. Red uh, has fishing ships that are not really doing much now. And the transitions are the toughest things in Age of Empires 2. You can tell how much Red prioritized gold and stone here. 1,200 stone in the bank. Cannot make a castle in the Feudal Age, however. Well, close 1v1 fight. This will actually be rather important. They both might actually go down here. Oh, man. 2 HP there for blue. And now, Red's like, oh, yeah, okay. We're going to buy food to go Castle Age. Red's now probably like, oh, I don't have a building. Wait, what building can I make? Oh, no building. Man, I was so distracted. Oh, blacksmith. Okay, there we go. There's the blacksmith. Good stuff. So thinking about the right things. I'm curious now on what Blue's plan. So, like, Blue now gets to rest mentally as well. And Blue says, well, you know what I'm going to do is I'm going to add more economy so I can spend all this food on new villagers. And that's not a bad idea. We'll see if it's possible for Blue to also focus on the water. Right now, it looks like it'll only be two longboats. And, okay, Red, you have your buildings now. Now Red's probably focused back on the water. And now Red produces more vills. Red, you're killing me. You're killing me. You didn't click up yet. Okay, bought food is now going to... The, okay, now clicks up to Castle Age after eight more villagers. <laughs> uh, the lack of urgency at low elo is just the freaking best. Like, think of it from Blue's perspective. Sire, we've won the water. What shall we do next? We only have one ship and it's two HP. And Blue's like, uh, let's make one more and then let's focus on land. And he's like, but Sire, are we sure? Because they could still be controlling the seas with their feudal age units. Like, yeah, that's fine. Uh, we're finished with that. We're going to fo focus on land now. Oh, my God. The micro god there from blue. And then red, it's like, we got to go castle age. But sire, we don't have the building. And so he gets the building. And then he's like, he queues up eight villagers. And then remembers castle age is the thing again. But it's nice because they have, like, this is beautiful game. This is an amazing game. They have solid amounts of knowledge. There's probably a lack of execution due to maybe lack of hotkeys, experience, whatever. In fact, let's look at the speed. According to the APM chart, woo-wee! Holy crap, walled tower is a beast. That's all I've learned here. Very fast. This is probably when the fishing ships were clicked. This is probably when the villagers and the TC were clicked. This is probably when that villager was trapped in the wood line and he was being clicked to a tree. That's the way I see it. Red's going to make some houses now. Red did get pop capped or was about to. So Red prepping the houses just like earlier in the game. And oh my god, because Red is housed, Red still can't be on the way to Castle Age. Hey, there we go. Cancels the Vils. I love it. Good stuff. Now, is Blue still going to produce some more on water? I hope so. Yes. Blue also very worried that the dock's on fire. The ships are made of wood, and they don't want all their good, precious materials to burn up inside the dock. That would be funny to me. I have seen players before 
it's not common, but I have seen them repair things to the point of not being on fire anymore. Because if you think logically about the flames, if something's on fire, it is only going to continue to burn until the fire is doused out, right? So it would make sense to me to just repair it until the flames are gone. Blue is producing a bunch of vills out of this TC. Not so much out of this TC. This is like the forgotten town now. And now Blue says, hey, I'm in a pretty good spot. Let's make those man-at-arms finally. And so Blue's going to make that. Red's still making some navy, which is good. Also, Red is getting ready for, I think, a castle drop. If I had to guess where Red would drop this, I would guess that Red would drop it here. Now, it would be very unwise to try and send it near the docks that you haven't scouted. But we don't necessarily watch low elo players for their wisdom, do we? Okay. Now, also could be one of these islands with the ostrich. Oh, my God. Not the ostrich island. I was kidding. Honestly, that would be a really good castle spot, though. It's right next to the docks, but it's so risky if Blue sees it. Okay, the first thing Red will probably do is drop this castle. Dang. If Blue just moves out at all here, Blue can deny that so easily. Oh, what a risky castle spot. But I think Blue is a little worried because there's been a lot of pressure from Red. And Blue wasn't prepared for that yet. The so Blue is clearly focused a bit more on land at the moment. Is getting tons of infantry upgrades. Is adding another dock. But look at Red getting Fletching now. Getting the War Galley upgrade, which affects the fires and the galleys. That is an awesome castle spot. Ooh, oh no, Blue still doesn't see it. I'm worried for Inquisitor here. Also, are we going to see another castle on the island? <laughs> okay, we have to have three castles on the islands now. This is amazing. Now, that castle does see the ships, but it doesn't have enough range to actually shoot the ships. Blue does not see it. <laughs> This is epic. Let's go, walled tower. Let's go. Boom. Perfect stone count, too. It's like this was all part of the plan. Also, we have Chatras, which gives your elephants more HP. I don't know how you're expecting to get elephants to the enemy side right now, Red. <laughs> okay, Blue can actually see this one. Blue is looking over here. At least at some points. And now the fishing ships are actually bringing the ships in closer. I think Blue's... Yeah, Blue's making houses because Blue is pop-capped. And now I guess the fishing ships are all going to die. Okay, who needs fish? Fish isn't important. But the castles, man. The castles are going to wreck. And Blue probably will look over here in a second because of the attack bells. But this is really, really scary. Like You can see the panic. He's like, oh, I have to stop this. Not two castles. Little does he know there's more over there. Okay, clicking the vills. It's at 93%. Uh, the fire ships, the galleys. It's going to go up. Wouldn't surprise me at all. I know Blue's been through a lot. Wouldn't surprise me at all if Blue resigns now. However, Blue should not resign. Because now, you have the resources to go imp. And if you... Yes! That's the perfect castle! Yeah, if you castle here... You can treb this down in the next stage. What a game, man. What a game. Let's look at Red's food eco. Two farms. Yep. Two farms. So, not the best food eco. I don't think Red will ever make it to the Imperial Age at this rate. Blue's food eco is actually over here. Uh, and that's about it, actually. But yes, this castle should go up for Blue. I'm hoping Blue has a little bit more urgency about going up to the next stage here. You could also go for water control and then cannon galleons, yes. It's funny to me, though, how Blue is so insistent upon making infantry and getting infantry upgrades. It is possible Blue doesn't know that the blacksmith can affect your navy, but that just kind of cracks me up. There's no benefit of having infantry right now. I could see it if Blue was maybe patrolling them on the shoreline to, like, protect from a sneak. But that's not really happening. But okay, there we go. Imperial Age is on the way. So just like Blue just freaked out and sent everything to try and kill a couple of villagers, I think Red is going to freak out and send all the navy in after the Trebs. And two out of these three castles can be taken out. 
I guess if you had trebs from here as well, you could treb down this one. Um, Red's had a tough time with placing farms. And as someone who's been there, Red, don't feel too ashamed. Regardless of what people say, just keep living your life, all right? But also at the same time, maybe don't live your life like this. Make some food eco. Or maybe the market's your best friend. I don't know. Also, can someone remind me how expensive the Chadras upgrade is? Because that Chadras upgrade, it has a big effect on elephants. And I imagine it's not cheap. That unique tech will have very little effect. And oh god, oh god, Red is making trade cogs. Red is making trade cogs. I think Red's trying to make demos, guys. Well, no, Red made demos before. Is it Red gonna... Red, if you trade with his docks, you're a legend. Is he gonna gold heist and trade with the enemy's docks? Oh my god, he is. Oh my god. It's a smart tactic, guys. <laughs> he doesn't know the castle's there. He's trying to steal gold from the enemy docks. Oh my god. <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> okay, so if you go to this dock, you could still do it. Don't give up on the plan. We'll all be very upset. <laughs> Uh, meanwhile, only two farms. Okay, bam! Ah. Might be a good idea to give up on that. But, again, I appreciate the strats. What's Blue been waiting for? The Imperial Age. What's Blue gonna do? Make trebuchets. Also, is researching chemistry right away. And Red resigned! No! <laughs> no! Red gives up! Red... Wow, that is the most low elo game I've seen in my life. From the early infantry that doesn't really affect anything in the game. From the crazy demo spam from Blue. From the castles on the islands. From the early resign. That's kind of what I thought Blue was going to do earlier, by the way. I thought Blue was going to resign when the castles were up. So Blue sticking with it is actually a very admirable trait. At this elo. I mean, Red could have traded still and got some gold income. But Red's main main issue in this game was honestly just food economy. Um, I don't know if the stats... There's the speed. Uh, you could tell how fast he was until he went to the resign menu. But um, but yeah, I mean, it wasn't like there was a lot of farmers either. But Inquisitor had more food. Red still almost collected just as many resources. Uh, had more wood, had more gold, had more stone. Now, I thought it was a good overall game. If Red would have had five to seven more farms, Red could be an imp. It, it would have been funny to me to see Red try and mass trebuchets on these islands because you'd be trying to send trebs from these castles to here, which isn't really possible. Like, this was still a winnable game for Red. Unfortunately for Red, as I mentioned earlier, it just would have taken too much effort. And sometimes at lower elo, if your plan isn't working, it's just best for you to resign for your mental state. Still a great game, though. I, I'm really happy with that one. We definitely had to do more Nile Delta. Uh, total KD was 33 to 32. Amount of resources was quite close there. Technologies, also quite close. Um, but yeah, props to Blue for resigning. Props to Blue for realizing upon seeing three castles that this was the way to start it all off. Drop your own castle. Make some trebs. I'm proud of both players, though. I feel like if, if we get lucky... We will cast these players again on this map over the next week and a half, two weeks with this map in the pool. But for anyone who watches later on YouTube, I want to hear a couple things. What strategy here was your favorite? Was it the trade heist? Was it the castle drops? Was it the early supplies? Um, or was it possibly the, uh, the, the trapping your villager strategy? I don't know. I want to hear what your favorite moment was from this game. Also, I want to hear a very important thing. Do you think that this 0, zero with this little thing here looks like a face at the top of the screen? Let me know. We're trying to remove the score when it's not a best of something. I'm hoping Capture H can figure that out. But for now, just pretend it's a smiley face. All right? Two hours later. All right, ladies and gent. Well... I can see why they were able to finish the game so quickly and why I wasn't able to find the rematch. <laughs> Inquisidor 
is just so sick of this map. Here I thought this was going to be a rematch between these two, and I was getting all excited, and Blue just deletes everything at the start. Well, hey, congratulations, Walled Tower. You won the rematch. You prepared an awesome strategy, and you got the W. So, hey, well played, well played. I have to check in Kizidor's profile. Maybe the last time we saw him play was the first time he ever played on this map, and he was not a fan. I'm bummed, though. I really wanted to see what they would do, but we'll keep an eye out for them. That was interesting.